Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC guy. Well, today we're going to continue our look at the Wi Fi Tracks WFD30 Wi Fi interface for NCE DCC systems. Now, I know I covered the basics last time, showed you how it worked, but I also told you that I would take a look at some of the advanced functions in a future video. And this is going to be one of those. So today we're going to take a look at how to create the locomotive roster, how to uh, name all of the various functions, that kind of thing. And I'll show you how to set up Consist. Hit that little red uh, subscribe button. And when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Okay, I want to start out with these two locomotives right here in front of me, 5775 and 5786. So we're going to enter them into the locomotive roster, and then we're going to create a consist. And I'll show you how to do that. So let's go ahead and get started. And what I want to do is move to the iPad, because I'm going to use that to show you how to use all of these advanced functions. Okay, as you can see here in the settings on my iPad, I've selected the WFD30 as my Wi-Fi interface. So that's active now. So let's go ahead and move over and take a look at the Y throttle. So I've got the Y throttle app here in this collection. So I tap on that and we've got the Y throttle now. Let's go ahead and look down here at the bottom. You can see a little grayed out uh, second from the right icon that says web server. Let's click on that. And you can see that's the Wi-Fi Tracks WFD30 web page. And this is served from the WFD30 itself. So that allows us to make all of these function changes or changes to the settings, everything else. So we can go here, we can go into the settings, play with those. We can go and do a home net, and I'll talk about that in a future video, uh, the locomotive roster, which we'll work on today accessories like turnouts and accessory decoders. We can create routes, we can create consist, and we can reset everything. So when you open up the locomotive roster, this is what comes up. And you can see we got GWR 1363 left from last time. Okay, let's click on Loco 1, and we'll uh, change that. And let's put that to GWR 5775, and we'll change the address accordingly to 5775 and we'll save it. And it's saved it, okay, so that's fine. Let's go back and let's change the function names. So we've got function, the break is going to be the break sound, so I'm gonna leave that. This is something I apparently previously entered in here and cleared out the loco for this demo. So the break sound, we're gonna leave it latched. It's going to, yeah, the, the break sound is going to come on and stay on once we hit that F0. Okay, we'll save that, the guard, that's our guard whistle. It was, they had a whistle that they could communicate with the engineer. And we're gonna leave that, and we want it to be momentary, so we're not gonna latch it. So we'll save that. The whistle, that's our steam whistle, function two is normal. So we're gonna leave that in there, and we want it also to be momentary and unlatched. So save that. Now let's go back. Save that. And uh, what else can we do? Well, let's go back here and take a look. Um, we can go with Ops Mode CB Programming. Now, I, I think I mentioned that we would take a look at that. So that allows you to just program individual CVs. So it does not do things like CV29 and calculate it for you. Once you know the value of CV29, you can enter that here, but it will not calculate it for you like uh, Decoder Pro will. And the same thing goes with uh, any of the other complicated ones, such as the long address. The long address comes from uh, two CVs, 17 and 18. So you have to know those in advance. Those are best done with service mode programming or with uh, Decoder Pro, which will do those calculations for you. This is great for uh, if you want to uh, experiment with the various sound volumes, or if you want to experiment with the speed table settings. So you can go in and change those. So let's open it up. We want to change CV number. Uh, let's play with CV number two and change that. So we would enter that. We could put a value, and that's our starting voltage. So let's try a value of 10 for our starting voltage. And we'll hit right, 
and that should write it to the locomotive. And then we'll say done. And that's all there is to it. So that's something that you can experiment with your locomotive, make some quick changes, and that's about it. You can also do that, of course, on your uh, power cab uh, main throttle, do those kind of programming, and you can do service mode programming. So it does have some capabilities as far as programming goes. Okay, now we've done our save. And um, let's go back and make sure everything is still there. So we'll go to 5775. Look here, we've got brake guard. Let, let's make sure I'm going to change this. And we're going to change that from latch to unlatch. So we'll save it. And you can see it says latch. No. We're going to go back and hit save again. And we'll show you that, that it did take it. We'll go here. 0 through 9, break, it's unlatched. Now, one thing that I do want to point out, once you've entered a name for the locomotive and entered the DCC address in locomotive roster, you do need to hit the save button. And then when you go back out to the roster listing, then you can come back in and edit your functions. If you do not do it in that order, it will not be saved properly. So let me say that again. When you go in and create a new locomotive and enter a name for it, like in here, GWR5775, and enter the DCC address for it, you must hit that save button at the bottom and then go back in, and then you can make your changes to the functions. So it's important to do it in that order. Okay, now let's assume that you have made your changes to your functions. You changed the names of them and changed the latching, that kind of thing. And you've done your save. Now, what if you would like to test some of those things? Let's say you've played around with the volume of the whistle or something like that, and you want to give it a test to see if it worked. Well, instead of going out and, and getting and accessing the locomotive uh, using the keypad and the throttle, what you can do is right here, let's hit the drive function. OK, if you hit that drive, that gives you this virtual throttle on the screen and allows you to then test it. And you can hit your guard whistle and that will blow. So that allows you to then use this virtual throttle to test the various sounds and to operate the locomotive. So that's a really nice feature that uh, saves you a few extra steps from going out and using the actual throttle built into Y throttle to make these changes. Okay, so we get out. Now, what I want to do is go to loco 2, because we need 2 to consist. Okay, so we're going to go in here, and this is going to be changed to GWR5786. As I told you, we would. And the address is 5786. Then we're going to hit a Save. And you can see we've created that. Now let's check out our functions. So we got the brake, yes, the guard whistle set up, and the uh, steam whistle set up. So let's go back here. Uh, and now we can do our save here. So we're going to save all this, and we're back at 5786 here. Now I told you that um, one of the things I would show you is consist. And the easiest way to do that, let's get back into wide throttle here and go back. Now let's set up a consist that uh, I showed you earlier, 5775 and 5786. So let's take and select 5775 from the roster list here. So I've highlighted that and hit set. Now let's go down here and click on 5786 and hit add. Now that has created a consist. And it tells you the direction is normal, okay? So click on that. So you've created your consist right there. So now you can go ahead and operate that consist by switching to your throttle. And then both of the locomotives are going to respond in the consist, as you see here. So you can see they're not exactly speed matched to one another, but they are operating under the control of this one throttle. So that's how easy it is to set up a consist on your NCE system using the WFD30 and 31 web server page. So it's a very slick method for creating a consist. And this is 
what NCE refer to, refers to as your brute force method. Digitrux calls it universal consistent. So that's, uh, for, for those of you that are familiar with those terms, that's just what you're doing. You're using the throttle to set everything up. And then once you're done, you can just hit that release button and that clears out the consist. So that's all there is to that. And in a future video, I'll get into the more complex NCE consist, a method that uses their advanced consisting. Okay, now one thing I want to show you before we do move on is how you can download the roster file and save it so that in the future you, you don't lose all that information if you need to do a factory reset. So let's open up a browser, and this is just the, uh, the Safari browser on my iPad, and um, I'm still connected to the Wi-Fi Trex WFT30. So we can enter the, uh, the URL address, and they give you this. It's 192.168.7.1. And that's the uh, WFT30 web page. So let's go there. So this is just accessing it through my web browser, which is Safari on the iPad. And you could use uh, Chrome. You could use various others. OK, so what we want to do, let's go back into our locomotive roster. And of course, you could do this here on your uh, in your browser. You don't have to necessarily use the other connection I just showed you. But anyway, we've got the entire roster here. So let's download the roster. I'm going to click on that. And we're going to download all the actives. We're going to call it Loco Roster. And let's go ahead and hit the download button here. And we hit that and we get a progress bar coming across as it's being downloaded. And then when it's done, it's going to be placed in our downloads window in, uh, in on the iPad. And we'll go there in just a minute. Let's give it a time to do its thing. Imagine what would happen if you created a roster with the maximum of 100 locomotives, because that's how many you can put in here, 100 locomotives. I think that would take care of a lot of people's uh, locomotive roster, that's for sure. OK, we're almost done. Now it says, do you want to download it? I'm going to say download. OK, now let's close that and we'll go over to the uh, files. OK, and I'm going to click on my files right here and bring that up. And you can see we've got our locomotive roster. And there's JSON 1 and JSON 2 because I did try this a minute ago and I didn't get it recorded. so. Um, I, I had to repeat that. So you can see we've got the same roster repeated. And that's exactly what it is. You can see this is what it looks like when it's when you open that file. So there's just, a, it's a text file and it's called a JSON format. So that's all there is to it. it. Tells you everything that's in there. Okay, so that's it, how you download. And of course, uploading, you can do that as well. Um, we'll go back and get out of here. And you could upload a roster. And you can even upload a JMR roster. And that gets more complicated. I'm not going to go into that. But basically, the upload process is just the reverse of the download. You'd click Upload and, and go for it. So it's fairly straightforward. So this is a very important function, in my opinion. I'm a firm believer in Murphy's Law. If something can happen, it eventually will happen. And it's going to happen at the most inopportune moment for you. So make sure that you do your, your roster backups by downloading them onto your uh, computer or onto your iPad, whichever that you're using. I, I do want to point out one very important aspect of this, and that is the factory reset. And I ran into this when I was working with it last week, and I managed to get it all screwed up somehow. And my locomotives were dancing around on the track and not responding well to the throttles. And what I ended up having to do was do a factory reset. And as soon as I did that and powered the unit back up, Everything went back to normal and it was operating just like I showed you in the last video. So it's something that's very important. And unfortunately, because of the complexity in doing some of these things, you can end up creating problems. And let me show you what it's involved because it's a very simple procedure and it is described well in the instructions. So in order to do a factory reset, first, just turn the power off to your model railroad and remove this 
so that you can work with it. And then take this dip switch right here, push it up to the on position so all three of these are on, and then plug this back into your model railroad cab bus just like you normally would. Turn power back on, let it sit like this for a few seconds so that it can reset. Then turn power back off, push this dip switch back down to the off position. So you've got 110 again, and that's for address 10. Plug it back in, turn power back on again, and at that point it should be back to the factory default settings. And anything that was going wrong should be cleared up. So if you do get off track when you're doing some of these uh, complicated things and you do manage to mess things up, feel free to just do a factory reset and that'll get you back to the starting point where it will behave just like it did right out of the package. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. Hopefully I didn't get into too much information overload with this video. I've tried to keep it short and just get down to the very basics because the manual is very, very good on how to enter the locomotives, edit them and create the rosters, all of that. And in a future video, we'll go back again and take another look at how you can enter things like accessory addresses, turnouts, and create routes using your turnouts and save all those. So there's a lot still to be covered in this. Unfortunately, there's just so much that this can do that it does take a little while to dig into it all and, and get it all fleshed out in videos. So there's a lot to go over and that takes a lot of camera time and I cannot do it all in one video and keep it in that 15 to 20 minute time frame that I'm trying to shoot at these days. So have a great week, have a great weekend, and I'll see you here again with another video from the DCC Guy. Bye now.